why are so many people suffering from thyroid issues and hormone disruptions that are causing all kinds of issues like stubborn weight gain, chronic depression, anxiety, and insomnia? Well, today I sat down with my friend, Dr. Stephanie Rimka, and we really broke down all of this for you guys. I think you're really going to enjoy this episode. I've included all of her information in the information section below this video for you guys, so please do go follow her and check her out. And I want to take a brief moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is betterhelp.com. One of the things that we touched on, just a small part of this, was the need for emotional support when we are trying to heal our bodies, when we're trying to heal our thyroids, autoimmune issues, stubborn weight gain. And BetterHelp is a service that I have used since the very beginning of 2020 for myself personally to have a therapist that I have connected with online. I also have several of my own clients who are using BetterHelp. You can use my link, which will be in the information section below for you guys and get 10% off of your very first month. So this is a crucial part in our healing journeys, guys, to have that emotional support piece. We can do all the right things with diet, with supplement, with sleep, and if we are still not working on that emotional component, then we might be missing the boat. So thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Again, you can follow my link and save 10% off of your first month. And you can be in contact with a therapist in as little as 24 hours. The other cool thing is if you don't like your therapist, it's a very easy process to change to a new one. And they have therapists that specialize in all different areas. So please do check them out. Please enjoy this interview with my dear friends, Dr. Stephanie Rimka. I did edit out a few curse words, not because I'm afraid of cursing, but because I was afraid YouTube <laughs> would not keep this video up. She is a very awesome, fun, and spirited person. So I hope that you guys find this information very valuable, helpful. Please subscribe to the channel while you're here. And don't forget to check out BetterHelp if you need some extra help. All right, guys, I'll talk with you again soon. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming back to the channel, tuning in. I'm really excited about today's guest. She actually lives <laughs> just a couple of miles away from me. We probably could have just done this in person. Uh, but Dr. Rimka is a friend of mine. She's actually the doctor that told me about the carnivore diet. I had heard nothing about it. Thought she was a complete lunatic when she told me about it. <laughs> and uh, I thought it'd be really cool to have her on the podcast on the YouTube channel. So thanks, Dr. Rimka, for being here today. You're welcome. I love uh, hanging with you. Now, obviously, you didn't think I was a real lunatic because you you pretty much did it right away. <laughs> it didn't take a lot of convincing, but I think maybe... You just were so desperate that you were like, I'll do anything at this point. So I was, I mean, I remember I was sending you my labs and I was sending you all this stuff and you were just like, you know what, why don't you just try this? I've been doing it for five months and I'm not dead. And I did think you were a lunatic, but only for like a couple of days. And then after a couple of days, I think you had done like a Facebook live talking about it. Mm. Um, that's back when you did a bunch of Facebook lives and I watched yeah. it and I was like, I knew you didn't need to be thinking anymore. That's what it came down to. I went like, yeah, what we could make. I was busy. I had a long wait list. And I'm like, we could go through and pick this and do all that. But I like the nuance of that wasn't important for you. At that point, I knew it was just nourishment and nurturing and relaxation, stress management. So I wanted to make things as simple as possible. And I knew we would get some results. And then from there, I would have been open to, okay, let's, you know, fine tune things if we need to, but often you don't actually need to because the body knows exactly what to do. If you give it what it needs and you take away the toxins, we need to stop acting like we're going to micromanage every physiological process at a deep quantum mitochondrial, uh, you know, function, it will handle it itself. And it is smarter than you. It is smarter than me. Right. So luckily, you know, and of course there's nuances and finesse and we have to look at what did all the juicing do to my body? What did the years mm -hmm. of the vegetarian do to my body? What did that illness do? What did that car accident do? What did that toxic abusive relationship do? Whatever. Right. Right. You have to look at that in, and, and look at how we heal that. But in general, we give the body what it needs according to the laws of nature and it knows exactly what to do. It doesn't need us to micromanage it. 
And the whole stress piece was huge because I was getting up to go to the gym every day at five. And I thought that's kind of what I had to do. And my body kept getting more inflamed and more in pain and more joint pain. It's like green smoothies and wake up at 5 a.m. and do, you know, eat your vegetables and eat just a tiny bit of meat. Like that's what I was doing. That was my formula at the end. And you were the first one who's like, stop freaking going to the gym at five o'clock in the morning, stop the smoothies, you know, fill up your plate with meat and get rid of the vegetables. And I was like, she sounds crazy. But at this point, what I'm doing is obviously not working at all for me. We undervalue rest a lot. And especially for women and especially moms and then especially moms of special needs children. So whatever that might be, any, any type of kind of chronic illness that affects how a mother handles her family and, it, and things are often rotating around the child, whether it's cerebral palsy, seizures, autism, bipolar, right? Uh, Lyme, mm-hmm. candace, ticks, I don't care. That's a very different dynamic. And I was very aware, aware of that. That's what I specialize in. And so I could see it from you a mile away. I understood it. And I'm like, "Mm, we don't need more brain input. We don't need more thinking. We don't need more work. And that is the common mantra. Get up earlier, sleep less, work harder, eat less. You don't have willpower motivation. And I basically want to just say to all of the people saying that, (laughs) because I am so tired of them telling that to exhausted women, especially exhausted mothers, like you're not working hard enough. Yeah. Complete lunacy. Yeah. And we get women like this. I mean, you and I both have people that follow us on Instagram and different social media platforms. And I think that's a huge thing that women are being told is the reason why you're overweight, the reason why you have autoimmune issues, the reason why your body is sick right now is because you're not working hard enough. You're not getting up early enough. You're not cutting calories. You need to be eating less fat. You need to be exercising more. And I feel like a lot of these women have tried that already and they keep getting sicker and sicker. Yeah. We want that, all those things. I I want you to work out when you're well. Yeah. Like I want you to do that, but I just made a video about it and, and uh, we'll post it. And I'm talking about um, different neurotransmitters and one of what I did today and I'll post it today or tomorrow um, was about low endorphins. Right. So there's different like, I mean, you know, neurotransmitters and hormones that I have to look at with mental health and brain performance and a way, and those are, you know, enkephalins and dinorphins, the, the opiate, uh, peptide, pain and pleasure modulating chemicals. And a lot of women have low endorphins and there's a number of reasons for that. Um, and that leads to heightened pain, physical pain sensitivity, heightened emotional sensitivity, um, craving of foods big mm-hmm. time, often that addiction to them because that is the com- that is the driver of the comfort eating um, and, and the comfort alcohol or the comfort mm-hmm. weed or whatever. And it's coming from this low endorphin state. Now, there's a number of reasons that ended up there, right? And I, I, we can talk about that or not. Um, I talk about it in the video. But the number one way to raise endorphins that you're going to find all over, and it's true, but I made it be the last thing I said in the video for a reason, because the number one way is exercise. Mm, yeah. But the last thing I want to tell a low endorphin person who probably also has low catecholamines, low dopamine. So we're in a lot of physical pain and we're exhausted and we have low motivation and, and a tremendous amount of apathy. But I'm supposed to tell you, well, what all you got to do is work out and you'll feel better. <laughs> you know, I think it's, I think it's horrible healthcare. I think it's setting people up to fail and I don't do it that way. So I'm going to reverse engineer that and start with the bottom of where we have to go and get them well enough. So one day they can exercise. That might take me six weeks. That might take me a year to get somebody to the point now and, and they're there though, in that gym, hitting those hard weights. And it might've taken me a year or two to get that chronic fatigue person or that fibro person. But if you're listening to a bunch of, and I'm not trying to, you know, gender stereotype, but a bunch of 35 year old hot guys on the social talking to a 45 or 50 or 60 year old woman who had Lyme and had four kids and, you know, dealt with postpartum, 
you know, depression issues because she's copper toxic, but nobody has told her that. So she's still walking around with all that same heavy metal problem. Mm. Like the answer is to just get up earlier and have more willpower. And, you know, I love David Goggins, but hashtag stay hard ain't going to work for everybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I agree. Yeah. Like, you know, so there's that balance of women will, you know, we know how to push ourselves into exhaustion, into yep. sacrifice, into taking care of other people. But there comes a point we we have struggled to learn how to mother ourselves, yes. to nourish ourselves. You have got to pick up where your mama left off. If hopefully your mama did it for you when you were little. Many did not. So if you've never experienced it, you may need help to learn how to do it. And that isn't bonbons and bubble baths. You know, <laughs> right. mothering yourself is the way you think, talk, behave. And, you know, we all know little kids, you're a mom, I'm a mom. Mm -hmm. uh, when they're tiny, they're only crying for a few reasons. You know, we all go, huh, tired, hungry. Yep. <laughs> Needs to be t loved and touched. I mean, yep. it's not, you know, the, the poop, there's a pee or there's a dirty diaper. Usually it's tired. Yeah. Hungry. Right. Yep. Welcome to most women walking around. Pretty yeah. much tired and hungry. Yep. Right? Yep. How is malnourished. That mal how are they supposed to lose weight like that? Yeah. And that, that malnourishment thing is huge because you can be overweight and be malnourished. And that's most, most are. I yeah. mean, you're gonna be that's why you're overweight. Yeah. yeah. And the, the green smoothies and filling your plate with mostly vegetables is not the way to get nourishment. Um no. that was the biggest mind shift, you know, mindset shift for me, besides the no more getting up at 5am thing, yeah. um, was like, and now you probably can get up early, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's, there's a point I tell you, I was at a 5am today. Yeah. I have done a lot of things today and I'm, I'm fine yeah. because I've healed my circadian biology. I've healed sleep issues. I live in connection to nature more than I was years ago. My mitochondria are healed. I understand sunlight. I understand light modification in my home. I respect those rhythms. So, and when your body works, it, it's cleaner. It doesn't need so long to sleep to clean itself anymore. Yeah right? You don't need 10, 12 hours because it can get the job done in six or seven. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So that's, it'll know it, it, I just like it can tell me now when I'm hungry. Okay. I'll eat. It can tell me when I'm thirsty. Okay. I'll drink. It can tell me when I want to have sex. Okay. I'll have sex. Right. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> you know, it'll tell me when I'm tired and I go to bed. It tells me time to wake up. Okay. Right. So, and that happens when you get more healed and healthy. Again, if I know if you're dealing with an acute illness or a chronic illness, that goal goes, uh, it gets a little bit wacko and the signals are confused because your body's trying, you might, you might need to sleep more. You might need to, you know, mm -hmm. have sleep problems. So we work on healing that. Obviously we get to that point, but then I have to remind people, your body knows what it's doing. Mm -hmm. if, you it, if you set it up to be successful and you stop confusing it, you, you know, if you put on sunglasses at noon outside, that's confusing as hell to you. Yeah. Brain, right? That was the other thing. Yeah. Ever since I started doing your group and your protocol <laughs> over two and a half years ago, almost three years ago, I haven't worn sunglasses in almost three years and everyone thinks I'm crazy, but I used to have the big glasses what? on all the time. No, I haven't worn sunglasses yeah. in three awesome. years now. Proud yeah. Of you. yeah. We yeah. go over light. We go over things because people have to remember food is well, like, well, let's not, let's let them learn if they don't know food is captured light. Yes. That's all food is is light waves. Everything is just waves, you know, electromagnetic frequency and light is part of a spectrum of electromagnetic frequency, right? Sound is, in, is a sound frequency as well. Sound is a nutrient, light is a nutrient, food is a nutrient, but that's just slowed down enough, right? We, it, the, the animals and the plants have this relationship with sunlight, <laughs> you know, if the, yeah. sun is, if the sun is covered, y'all, we're all, we're done. There will yep. be no more life on planet earth the way we know it, okay? Including all of us. We can't live without it. So the way these reciprocal relationships go, light's really important. I bring that really gently into the three R, that first course, but the masters, I go into electromagnetic 
and uh, frequencies and the mitochondria and the relationship of, of light and hydrogen and deuterium and, and all of those things a lot deeper. So you can really start biohacking your mitochondria because that's really the core of what we're mm -hmm. trying to, to deal with with those little uh, bacteria that are inside of us that are helping make all the energy and, and sensing, you know, they sense light, they sense electromagnetic things. And so I try to teach people how magical you are you yes. know, like you're, you're, you're this really amazing community of creatures that everything is working in your best interest. And I think women in particular with, as soon as a diagnosis of autoimmune mm -hmm. gets slapped onto you, now you've just been told you're so deranged and so disordered, your body is stupid. It can't even tell itself from, from something else. Yeah, I think that is one of the largest atrocities in Western medicine I've, among many that they do. I think it's, and it particularly targets women. It's the new yeah. hysteria. It's the new hysterectomy as far as I'm concerned. And I'm yeah. quite over it. Yeah. You know, the, the thing that I'm seeing a lot with my ladies is Hashimoto's and thyroid problems. It's huge. It's like, Everybody has, not everybody, I'm blessed that I don't, um, but so many women now struggle with Hashimoto's and thyroid issues. Why do you think that is? Uh, the estrogenics that are in the environment. Mm. So estrogenics are chemicals that mimic estrogen and bind to estrogen receptors. Um, there are the goitrogenics, <clears throat> the things that bind to the thyroid as well. However, um, the estrogenics are intimately tied in estrogen and uh, thyroid, all the hormones in the thyroid, uh, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and the thyroid are really, really, really connected. They're not going to work without each other working mm. at the same time. Um, and the xenoestrogens, we call them, mm -hmm. um, there's really the top 10. Um, Anthony J has broken this down in his book, the best for all the clinicians to reference. It's a great book for everybody. Um, estrogeneration, I highly recommend people get it, but the number one um, estrogen mimicking compound are the plant estrogens, mm. number one, and that's soy and flax. And how many women have been told that they <laughs> have soy and flax? And the estrogen, I mean, it's insane. They tested a hundred plants. There's very good studies on this and nothing comes close to the estrogen uh, potent effects of, of soy and flax, like a hundred thousand, you know, mm -hmm. parts per million or grams or whatever they do versus everything else was like under a thousand, but those are a hundred thousand. Wow. So people talk about meat, like saying, Oh, well, bread, meat and estrogen. And well, oh, my estrogen dominance cancer. And I'm like, and you're eating tofu, soy or flax seeds. Do you yeah. have any idea? I mean, the difference is insane. Yeah, it, it's certainly insane. And, but there's many, many more women and beauty products. Yes. I was going to ask. Yeah. Oh, oxybenzo, uh, whatever it's called, something like that. Oxybenzene or something like that. Is it all the sunscreens? Women are slathering this. All oh my God. Babies. Yeah. So you're getting it from birth. Practically. If you're in NICU, uh, you have to have any procedure. My son was in NICU as emergency. We both almost died. If you have, if they pop an IV in a baby from day one, you're getting those phthalates right from all the plastics that's used in medical care. Mm. It's like they're coming out of the IV bag. It's coming into your arm. You're getting poisoned with plastic. It's almost all plastic based things. So you got the plant estrogens are number one. Then you have all the plastics. So every time you have food wrapped in plastic, use plastic wrap, saran wrap, your Ziplocs, plastic water bottles, BPA, B, all of those. If it says BPA free, that's a total scam. They're just mm -hmm. using other, they're using other things. All of these things are attacking the estrogen receptors and uh, altering the thyroid as well. I mean, water, drinking water is full of birth control pills, EE2. Atrazine is another chemical. It's one of the top 10. These are all, they all affect uh, fertility, cause mm -hmm. miscarriages, and they all affect your thyroid. So there's so much nonsense out there. We're being poisoned to death. So it's also one of the reasons why I'm super opposed to all these drink all this excess water challenge because all oh my gosh, yeah. drinking a bunch of microplastics, glyphosate, atrazine, birth control pills, benzodiazepines, causing more problems. 
yeah. causing way bigger problems than people are realizing. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of that, not to mention, of course, when we say soy, people say, well, I don't eat soy. Pumpkin, if you eat in a restaurant ever, you're eating soybean oil for days mm. on end because it's all soybean oil. If you yeah. eat anything in a box or package, it's soy based now. You know, they've yeah. replaced everything with, with that. And yeah. it, so there's a number of reasons, <clears throat> not to mention lack of sunlight, mm-hmm. not to mention the radiation stress of being at computer screens and holding up things like this and watching movies on your iPad and having that blast at the thyroid. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So it's why you would see in a lot of videos I do often would have a scarf around my neck. Mm. And if people have Hashimoto's, I tell them you should be covering your, your throat whenever you're, whenever these screens are going to be blaring at you. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. I've, you know, we never eat out anymore and I've gotten my husband finally, like he's stopped complaining about all the light bulbs that I've put out. (laughs) (laughs) Cause, cause you know, I had all these horrible light bulbs that, and so now I have all the ones that just kind of block out the blue light and he can't tell what color his socks are. And he's finally okay with it. He'll like go outside and look at them under the sunlight to see if they're matching. Yeah. But my son too, he's like, mom with the red lights everywhere. I mean, if you could come up to my house at night, I mean, it's just my friends joke. I'm like, Oh boy, Satan house. What's up? What's up Satan? I'm like, I know because this is a red glow everywhere because we convert everything to like fire at night, which is what yeah. you're supposed to do. And then you can get some that are these kind of full spectrum look like white, but mostly my house will look orange and red. Yeah. Mine it's all orange and yeah. it's in the back half of the house. I haven't yeah. done the front half yet. Cause he won't let me but the back half of the house is all the bathrooms, all the bedrooms are all like orange. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, that's too. fine. That's, that's totally fine. But he's at the point now where he'll read labels. He doesn't want to go out to eat at restaurants because he knows about the oils yeah. and he'll read labels. Like I just got him to get rid of all of the salad dressings a few months ago that he loved. Oh. Yeah. So now, yeah, I finally have him like on the same page with me, but it took a long time. Yeah, it takes forever. I mean, unless yeah. you're, I mean, even me, I don't end up dating people that I can't make it a requirement that yeah. you're a carbon copy of me and you're right. going to know all this stuff I know. So I have to just slowly like, so, you know, you might want to consider. Yeah. You know, no like, more dryer sheets in my house, please. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. no more of that smelly detergent. Like we have uh, to. Fragrance is a big one. Fragrance Oof, is yeah. a major. So to avoid those things, fragrance is a massive one. So if you start avoiding yeah. products and so that's what I said, we, women, why there's so much of that is we poison ourselves more than yeah. men do on the daily with hair, yep. beauty, all these bizarre things that we do, um, you know, without thinking about it. But the reality is, please understand there are our alternatives. I'm not totally raw that I don't wear any makeup or whatever, but I, yeah. it's mineral based, it's natural based. There aren't any of these things in there. My skincare has none of those chemicals in there. Right. I don't, I use special nail polish. I take, if I'm going to get a pedicure, I bring my stuff. Here, this is what mm-hmm. you're using on my skin and on my things. So they're not altering my hormonal systems because they all do. Yep. And so I, I like shudder every time I see people taking little girls to like the nail salon. Uh, they, oh my God. I know. I'm going to have to get your nail polish because I haven't gotten my nails done in like two oh, yeah. years. I quit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Quit. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's okay. a few other ones, um, but Z-O-Y-A, they're, they're a good brand. Um, okay. I think Sarah Gottfried end up, it does... I don't know if it's her, if she's the one that does some pretty good research on that. I just kind of like, yeah, some people are into their thing and you just kind of can trust what they are researching all the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These are the things, I mean, this is why I wanted to bring you on and chat in more in depth because everyone I feel like is so obsessed with the food. It's all the food, the food, the food, the food, and they might be carnivore or keto, you know, mm-hmm. um, but that's all they want to do. They don't want to look at this other stuff and maybe they do get the food stuff good to a point, but they're still using dryer sheets and they're still going to the nail salon and they're still doing all these extra things and they're still struggling with weight loss resistance. And and they're still living a very disconnected non-primal life. So they might be trying to have a primal way of eating sort of, you know, much better than a standard American diet. Absolutely. I mean, you can't, I mean, there, nothing really can get worse than that besides anorexia, I guess. Right. I don't know <laughs> right. what else could be worse, like not eating. Yeah. Um, so 
but there's so much more to it again. And some people that's all they have to do. You know, they make a few changes mm -hmm. and they're living to their, to what they're willing to do. You got to realize like, you know, your results are going to be to what you're willing to do and mm -hmm. from where you started. Like, yep. are you starting 200 pounds overweight and with seven medications and a bunch of di diagnoses, or did you start off like, you know, just a little bit of something like, okay, yeah. I could do better, whatever. It's, it's going to be different, right? right. You're going to have to do more and you're going to have to leverage um, the, the healing principles of nature. And we can, we tweak those with technology. We have ways to like biohack a lot of these things, but some of this is as simple as you need to focus on sleep Mm -hmm. And you need to focus on stress management yeah. and you need to learn that food is not everything. Yeah. It's just one part of life and it certainly shouldn't be the center of your entire existence. Yeah. The, the stress thing is so huge too, because I'll talk to people and just the tone, you know, their messages that they send me on Instagram or even email, the tone is like super hysterical. Yeah. And I'm like, and they're like, I'm doing everything right and nothing's working. And it's just this like hysterical message. And I'm like, you have some major, <laughs> major well, disconnect they'll going you, on. They'll tell you they don't sleep. They're mm -hmm. taking care of a dying parent. Oh yeah. Their child is sick. I mean, they'll tell you right there. And you're like, and you really think this 25 pounds is what your body is going to prioritize right now? Right. I mean, this is, you're, you're, you're telling me a story of absolute duress, stress, overwhelm. I mean, it, you know, I just want to like, I want to go through the screen and give her a hug. Right. Absolutely. Not a supplement. I'm like, right. oh man, we, we need to like, you need a moment. You need, you need some women to hold you. You need to go off into a red tent for 10 days. She needs a break. Yeah. Right. So, but how can we do that? Yeah. You know, when you really got, it's her life, right? You can't yeah. just, you couldn't just leave your daughter and your husband. Like, I, don't, right. you know, I don't know how to do it. So, so we have to look at, okay, how can we bring rest into there? How can we bring nurturing? How, what are the ways? Food absolutely is a way you can nurture yourself and nourish yourself or abuse yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So I love people making these animal-based keto carnivore uh, whole foods, nutrient dense kinds of things, keeping it simple, just, just that alone, like keeping it, it's a huge change, right? But that's not the end all be all, you know, what else are you doing? What else is going on? You know, all these little things we have to help point out, but you know, I recently had somebody in my weight loss group on a zoom, a coaching zoom we did and everybody was queuing and a with me and I'm like troubleshooting what the thing is. And woman's going on and I'm, I forget all the little things. And I was like, really like, huh, she's doing it. I mean, I mean, what? She's taking the supplement bundle. I know she's in ketosis. We're doing fasting mimetics. I, I, I know this liver is healing. I, I, what's, what? I know with mitochondria, I mean, I'm, I'm putting it in there. She should be making more. Um, but then she reveals, well, you know, and so I go to stress and she's a paramedic. Oh God. So she's in the, in, she's, well, you can see my, my, my thing. She's I'm in the car on a break, left the ambulance, like on the way to work or something like that. Right. So you already, yeah. oh my God. Right. So I already know the system has to go into high gear. We have, we have cortisol, ad adrenaline spikes all the time. And if she doesn't know how to regulate herself back down into a neutral alpha to blunt that cortisol, I'm like, oh, okay. We probably have to coach on that. Cause that's where yeah. we're at. We are in a career that requires high death alert. Then she reveals though, and I'm kind of, oh, okay. And I'm start talking about vagal stimulation and breathing, you know, like, okay, here's what we can start doing. But then reveals, well, but I'm really, it's been really hard. I don't know if it was six months ago, probably a year ago, some, somewhere in that. Uh, she was first on the scene when her child died in a car accident. What? Exactly. Oh my God. So I said, uh, we can stop this whole conversation right the fuck now. Yeah. I don't care about a supplement, a food you're eating. Cause it was all about what can I dial in to eat? You know, wanting to restrict more. Maybe mm -hmm. I should go from keto to carnivore. Maybe, I, uh, no, maybe we need to get some help. Maybe yeah. she, we need to deal with the trauma. 
And she was really just in still shock. And that's there with her. She said, yeah, mm. I was the one that was on scene. I saw him first. Mm. I'm like, oh no. So the whole group just stopped and every, every woman on there was like, <gasps> and I, so uh. we, took, we took a moment and we just showered her with love. We just mm. prayed for her. We just intended for her. And we said, okay, we're going to hold space around this. So then it shifted my whole thing. I'm like, uh, uh-uh. we got to get you help. And mm-hmm. here's the ways to do it. Like, let's just keep nurturing yourself, but we cannot deprive right now. Right. Yeah. So, but she didn't make that connection. I mean, she didn't think yeah. that this was, it was kind of like after I'm pin- like, well, what Well, this and what about, and I'm like, huh. And I was getting stumped. Like, I don't get it. You know, she, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Unless I'm not, I'm getting bad reporting. I'm like, I don't understand. I mean, that, you know, I can go to bioidentical hormone replacement. I'm thinking I'm like, hmm, hormone replacement, maybe testosterone, like going to some labs, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't care right now. We, we have to deal with that. And if she was a patient, I would be actually running hormonal labs because at that age and with that, she's probably not producing stuff and having those not well, um, especially testosterone will affect your ability to handle stress and trauma. Mm, It really does help with PTSD and things like that. So, you know, you have to look at each person, you have to look at yourself as what's going on. And I think we've just normalized overwhelm yeah. and normalize stress and normalize busy. Oh, I'm so busy. Like it's yeah. like a, it's like a fudge of honor for people now. Oh, well, I'm busy. Yeah. I'm so busy. I know I hate when people call me up or text me. Like, oh, Dr. Rimka, I know you're so busy, blah, blah. I'm like, what is it making? I mean, I keep trying to tell you guys, I only see patients three days a week. It doesn't mean I'm not doing things. Right. right? But when people, you say that, I'm like, Sarah, I have time. Like I want the time for what matters <laughs> in life. Like having a conversation with you it's not stressful for me. And if, yeah. I want, if I don't answer my phone, it means I can't talk. Right. But if I can't, I'll, I'll, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, so I really, you know, I mean, I'm doing stuff, but the idea of like, uh, I'm good. You know, I don't want to be overwhelmed. Now, does that happen sometimes? Cause you know, there's bumps in the road. It's like, oh man, I got to catch up on stuff. We know what it's like, right? Yeah. Totally. A family member could get sick or you could, something happens to you. I'm like, oh, I really got behind on that. Or like, oh, oh, the tax thing, or oh, oh, this, a water leak in my house, you know, things yeah. happen that put you like, I couldn't do anything because I had to deal with this problem for two days, right. you know, but in general, that normalization of overwhelm and stress and mm-hmm. never having time and like, you're never supposed to just daydream and have nothing to do. And I struggle with that too. I struggle with like, okay, so I didn't actually do anything today. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, just hung out with people. Wow. You know, like, it, yeah, it, like, this is actually normal. People used to like do nothing on a Sunday. Remember right. like, growing up, like, right, literally, you, it was like, you were in trouble with God if you if you worked, like, right. that's how much they had to put it into the human psyche. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's forbidden to actually work on that day. You're like, really? Yeah. I need to, we need to bring that back. I agree. What's that part of religion? <laughs> I just, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just did this 12 week kind of course about trauma, you know, it was a trauma just going through stuff and a somatic a experiencing. Yeah. As a student, I did it starting in, I think it started in February and it went all the way through June. So it was a pretty intense uh, course. There were some breaks in it, but it was great. I learned a lot, but she really goes into, um, her name's Irene Lyon. I just actually did a podcast with her not too long ago, but she was really explaining what happens to the body when we've had trauma that's unresolved, when we have stress and what the nervous system does and how it actually can create a shutdown response. Yeah. And it shut down the organs, shut down the thyroid, shut down the gut, like because there's unresolved trauma that you, yeah, it's survival. Mm-hmm. And so many people are living in this chronic shutdown state. And then they're like, can't lose weight, chronic health issues, all these things popping up. And they're not dealing with the trauma. They're not dealing with the stress. And that's why it's so difficult to heal, you know? Yeah. And sometimes it is just a matter of, I mean, the psyche is genius at trying to protect us, right? Yeah. I don't know when the shift was, whether it's just industrialization and city living and working for money that created our 
inability to process trauma and stress because indigenous cultures don't go through this. And I don't know if it's just because they have so much more movement um, and because animals don't either. And, and one of the big things is because they shake. You know? Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they shake it all. You have a, a physical way to deal with it. And I don't, I, I don't, haven't studied it enough anthropologically to look at, all right, what are the humans who don't experience this? versus this experience, the humans that do, you know, you can have groups of people that go through all kinds of trauma and they don't end up traumatized. Right. They, they, you don't have to, just because you have bad things happen, doesn't mean you, you end up having it stuck in your, in right. your body or your nervous system, right? Yeah. You can process it out. And ultimately right. the way I look at it, any experience, any energy that comes into you, a real level of mastery of that person is energy comes in and we can transmute it and make it better. We, we make yeah. our, we upgrade, right? There's like one mm -hmm. superhero that can do that. No matter what you do to him, he just gets stronger. I forget which one it was and X-Men or something like that. So if, if we can get our bodies to that point where we don't resist the, the impact of whatever, the physical or emotional stress. Yes. If that's just energy. We can just use it to heal, right? Yeah. We can redirect what, what's going to happen with it versus getting stuck. So you, if you look at animals, they always shake yep. after, you know, if they, they get away, escape the trauma, they go through this whole shaking thing. There's even a whole therapeutic modality around TRE. Yeah, T -T 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 -T. yeah, to shake, yeah. to learn how to do that. So I don't know what the, when, when it happened per se, that we don't let ourselves get it out. Um, but it's something to consider. It's, it's a societal thing. I mean, that's one of the things that we really talked about in the course is like um, somatic experiencing, being able to be in the body and hold, like have a container for sensation and actually feel it instead of, you know, like if a child falls off a bike, we're so quick to, of course, run to the child and be like, you're okay, you're okay. And not let them kind of have the experience they need to have of like, you fell off the bike and you're upset. Like yeah. sometimes we have to let the kid just have the experience before we rush in and try to say, you're okay. You're okay. Don't cry. Don't be upset. Like they need to cry. They need to go through, like your body needs to go through the cycle yeah. of a traumatic event and experience it, feel it and let it pass through. But what we do in a society, I feel is that we just kind of, we're not supposed to have feelings. We're not supposed to cry about things. We're supposed to keep a stiff upper lip. We're not supposed to talk about stuff. We just shove it in, but it gets trapped if we do that constantly. And then that can lead to more problems. Yeah. It could be as simple as that, the avoidance of the discomfort. Yeah. Uh, because I know, again, so in the trauma cycle, I use uh, a, as a whole, like a dissociative cycle and we kind of have to go up and down and you, to heal from one, from it happening, you have to actually increase stress and discomfort. Mm -hmm to go back to neutral and people avoid that. And it's one of the things in the healing um, phase, right? If you're dealing with somebody with any brain injury or mental illness or something like that, especially dissociative issues, which is a big reason that people overeat and, and mm -hmm. things like that, right? Um, when they start getting better, when, when so meditation does this too. And mm. You're a meditation expert and teacher. Uh, so one of the caveats that you, I'm sure no, one of the warnings of meditation, there are certain groups of people you have to be careful about. Oh meditation, yeah, hundred percent, right? yes. Yeah. So we, we don't just teach everybody to meditate. No. We don't do neural feedback on everybody. We have to go, oh, where are we? How stable is the system? How unstable is the system? How dissociative are they? Because <laughs> until we, I can get them used to, when you start healing and like the system goes, oh, cool, I'm safe. I'm good. Then it goes, well, I, really, I want to get all the way to neutral. I'm just in like phase one of the stress response. I got to get to the, the zero neutral. It has to climb a little hill neurologically and somatically, and that increases tension. So it might be like when people say, but I was so much better. And I don't know where it just came from out of nowhere because the system said, go ahead and shake it off. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so it starts rising, but if we suppress it, that's, it's the constant suppression and distraction. So yep. as simple as that, what I do already know. And so you distract it with, you know, TV, eating, mm -hmm. alcohol, uh, something, shopping. I, I, I can't feel this. I, it doesn't, because we judge it. Like, yeah. 
I should just be happy. My life is so good. And like, why all of a sudden did, did, did I have that? Or did I want to cry? Because you're finally getting it out. Yeah, the, the exactly. Body to get it out. Yeah. So it's a big thing. And you have to explain that. And I teach my patients with videos and you have, it's like to do it over and over again. Like, see, this is what's happening. Like it always happens with neurofeedback. We let them know mm-hmm. you're going to feel better. And by session 10 to 15, you're going to, it's not going to feel good for a yep. set, for, for a couple minutes, yep. a few weeks. Cause we get over the hump and then I put you in neutral and it's like, Oh God, I don't even know what this is. I'm like, I know you've never been idle because our society doesn't like it. Right. Right. And then once you, we, it's like meditation, right. But you know that like people can, if you can push a system that's not ready. Yes. It just increases dissociation because they Completely. can't handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, I don't even feel like yoga is a good thing for them because right. it's, it makes them feel, and it was hard for me to do. Right anything except like extreme hot, hard yoga. When I first started doing yoga, that's all I could do. It was like 90 minutes, 105 degrees, like intense, like kill me. I don't want to be in this class unless I feel like I'm dying, you know, and to do a slow restorative yoga class, kind of like, that's all I really teach now. I don't really teach the crazy hard stuff anymore. I used to, but since the pandemic, I kind of quit. Um, that kind of yoga can drive people nuts. If they're not, if their nervous system doesn't have the capacity for yeah. it, it can make them feel completely insane and uncomfortable. And I understand that, you know, people yeah. just don't, their nervous system doesn't have the capacity for it just yet. They have to be trained for it. You have to it, yeah. you can get there. So anybody listening, you can get there. Yes. You just, we, just like, I wouldn't take an untrained person and, and sign them up for a 10 K or a marathon. Right. We right. Have- we have to get you there. So just like you have to train muscles or a cardiovascular system, you may need to retrain the nervous system to understand how to calm itself. And part of that retraining of, yes, food comes into that. You know, we want to yeah. have enough that the, the nervous system has the cholesterol, saturated fat and amino acids and everything it needs, right? That's a part, but there's so many more things that go into it. And it's really important um, that, in particular women, I mean, it's not that these things don't get happen to men, they do, but it is much more rampant in women. I mean, yeah. and we know the emotions that are tied around autoimmune illness diagnoses. Again, I I don't like the term at all. Um, Shame is the number one Mm. emotion tied to it. And it has the, the, the largest impact on disordering the immune system. And women go through a lot of things, starting with little girls, much, we're shamed much more. Yeah. Uh, than boys in culture in general, um, you know, to where even it's the law in many countries around the world. If you and I get raped, we're getting arrested. Oh, jeez. That's the law. That's Dubai. Oh, jeez. Right. So if you call the police, if you go on vacation, you got raped. You call the police. You're getting arrested because you broke the law because you had sex out of wedlock. Jeez, oh, that's crazy, isn't it? And then people want to go there stuns Mm -hmm. me. So that's happens all over the place. Okay. So understand like this is not just, it's big collective consciousness stuff. And I'm very into the morphic field um, theory that absolutely we're tapping into the morphic field. And as it changes, we will change. Answers will come faster to us. And that's what's happening right now. Things we're having an acceleration of consciousness around the planet and it's pushing people into it as well. And some people are definitely struggling with that. Oh yeah, I would definitely say so. (laughs) Um, One thing on a totally kind of different topic I wanted to talk about is hormones Mm -hmm. Um, because there's this thing, and I think you and I had a conversation about this a couple of weeks ago, and I've talked to a lot of women that are in their late forties and early fifties. And some of these women I coach and they're very resistant to doing any kind of a hormone replacement, hormone testing Because there are some practitioners, you know, in the keto carnivore space that are like, no, food's going to be enough. If you just get your food right and your sleep right, you don't need to do any kind of hormone replacement at all. And I see these women, they're trying to do everything right. And I'm like, but that might be something that could be helpful for you, you know, at some juncture to look into. Yeah, I so I guess I don't follow those people who say those things, or maybe I unfollow. I have them. to deal with them because they're like, my, so-and-so told me to cut, stop taking my progesterone. So-and-so told me to not do the hormones. And I'm like, why did they? Doctors? 
No, they're like nutritional okay. practitioners. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. which so but so they're popular. Misin- yeah, misinformation and myth. So I, I definitely, you know, if you're going to be in a in a animal based community where we're basically everybody who's keto or promoting anything closer to primal living. Mm -hmm. Um, Everything we're saying is opposite of what Western allopathic medicine is saying, opposite of the FDA, opposite of the food guidelines. Like we're all breaking their laws. All right. So, okay. We start there. I find it. So I, I do find it incongruent and hypocritical when people can say, oh, all of that is nonsense and it needs to be this, but then they buy into the myths of a whole bunch of other stuff from the same group of people. I'm like, if you don't believe, like, how are you picking and choosing what they're, so the data on, you know, there was a lot of fear mongering based on some really bad studies using synthetics and using estrogen synthetics alone, not in balance with progesterone and testosterone. I think it's too many people are still not talking about testosterone. Yeah. Women. It's like, so the reality is it depends on how connected to nature and studying real humans and primal ways of living you go. Um, sorry, but you're living an incredibly unnatural disconnected life, living in a house with electricity, with your Wi-Fi, with your central heat and air, barely in the sunlight. People say, oh, I'm in the sun. You're in the sun 20, 30 minutes a damn day on 10, 15% of your skin. Right. That is not what my great, great grandmama was doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Everybody was, you know, butt naked, practically all damn day long. I'm deep African equatorial, the amount of sunlight I need, I am getting a fraction of that. My health will constantly be compromised unless I'm in the kind of sun my mitochondria really want. And I haven't set my life up enough that I could just move to Costa Rica and be on the beach all day. Right. I'm not there yet, okay? I'd like to be, all right? So you, you have to know what are your genetics and what are your little bit of influence on there? It's not everything, but it's definitely there. Uh, and you're, you're not living that close to nature. You sleep in a bed, yeah. air conditioning with a damn cell, a $1,500 phone next to your head. You know right. what I mean? You wear synthetic polyester plastic baked clothes all day. Your car is sprayed with estrogenics. Just the smell alone is making you fat. Mm. They're called obesogens. This is so, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that I don't kind of get. So my point in saying all that is you are prematurely aging. Your lifestyle and what we've done with technology and plastics and chemicals, glyphosate, the most toxic compound ever created on earth, worse than DDT, you're ingesting every day. It's in 70% of all the, the water and the air on earth. I don't care how organic you are, you are still getting it. All of us, okay? It's in the air. All right. Mm -hmm. And its whole purpose was to kill life and kill life in the soil. So let's just tell the reality here. And I'll also talk about a group in Siberia. So Siberia is a whole population there that have been said the Russians, they keep secrets. Russians don't share. Okay. They want to be super people. A whole big group of these people and Siberia is harsh living. They're over a hundred. So they've been studying them. A gerontologist did a 10 year study on this group in Siberia. And I guarantee your listeners don't know about this because what, when the hell are they going to read Russian research? Right. <laughs> okay. So 10 year study on this group to try and figure out why are so many of them old over hundred. And when, let me tell you, I don't mean over hundred. I mean, over 140, they what? live to 140 women are having babies at 60. What? Yes. So is menopause even really natural? I, I'm just, you know, that's a question. There are tribal, tri, tribals, anthropologists, people have been writing their little things back before they're like, wait a minute, these women are like, they look super ripped, but supposedly they're like 70. You know, wow. women are still having babies. They seem like, what, what's going on here? Well, Siberia studied it. And what they found was the most important factor in longevity and aging was deuterium in the water. So that was what the conclusion they came up with after 10 years of trying to figure it out. Well, it had nothing to do with the diet. I mean, kind of did because it's a low deuterium diet. But like, so you can maybe going through all this stuff and it's like, you're still poisoning yourself with the water you're drinking. Wow. So, and it's aging you prematurely. And all the, you mean your breast implants? 
Oh, God. I mean, let's just even talk about what women have been doing to themselves. Why? Yeah. Right? The- so that is ruining your hormonal system. Yeah. The food you've been eating, the water you're drinking, the makeup you're putting on, the shampoo you're putting in your hair, all the damn food. I mean, the hair dyes. <laughs> Don't even yeah. get started with how we torture ourselves with poison. So no, I, I really, I've done a couple of interviews recently and I'm like, I cannot understand why women are so resistant to this. Mm-hmm. I honestly, it's like, I have the answer to tell you how you're going to stop feeling miserable and have energy and all your anxiety and your depression will go away and you'll suddenly lose all the belly fat and build muscle again and want to have sex and you're fighting me on it. Like, I don't know. I, I, it's mind blowing to me. So that's where I'm at. I think people who don't do hormone longevity for a living should shut up about it then. Yeah. I agree. Better. Yeah, I agree. I just, I feel like some women actually could really benefit from it. And I think women could benefit from it. Yeah. I, I mean, mean I've, get I your just, labs done, get yeah. them done, but you have to also remember you can't, this is, this is another problem with labs and people. So all of you women, men, men need to understand they just keep changing the lab numbers yeah. based upon a sick population. So when your doctor reads the labs and goes, oh, but everything was normal. Uh, no, tell them to read them based on the lab numbers from 50 years ago, because testosterone levels and estrogen levels and progesterone levels and cholesterol levels were rocking higher as the normal average 50 years ago, even 20 years ago. And we Mm -hmm. know this, we have the data. So what are they doing? They just take 10,000 people and they say, here's where the glucose is. Here's where the testosterone is. Here's where the C-reactive, whatever. And then they just say, well, now the normal in the tent, you now people are sicker. They are yeah. more insulin resistant, more obese, worse, worse hormones, more thyroid problems, more autism, more everything. Okay. Yeah. More cancer. And so the numbers change because the population is sick. So yeah. now the bell curve has shifted over here. So now instead of saying, okay, testosterone should be 900 for a man, like 900 to 1500, they go, well, nobody has it anymore because they've all been eating soy and radiating their balls. So now it's well, 500 to, to 800 is good because that's how all the guys are walking around now. Mm. Well, that's not optimal. No, it's, it's not. It's supposed to be here. So that's what's missing. People say, oh, my doctor said, but I was normal. And I'm sure you've seen this people when they show you the numbers and you're like, you have a thyroid problem. I don't care right. if it's still in range. Right. It's shutting down. This is why you're tired. Or this is, because you look at the labs and you're like, yeah, it's normal for their range, but you're losing all your hair and you're constipated and you're tired. Right. <laughs> you're like, pumpkin, it's a thyroid problem. How, how, right. how long do you want to wait before it gets fixed? So that's what you have to understand. Normal is not optimal. And we don't fully know what optimal is because these optimal remote kind of tribes and people that we have available to us, we don't really have access to them. Right. I would love to know the numbers on that remote tribe on that island in India. But you know, if you show up there, they're going to kill you. (laughs) They kill everybody that shows up with a spear. Nobody (laughs) can get to them, right? Yeah. I wonder what their cholesterol numbers are. I wonder what their testosterone is. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not compared to all the sick, fat people here, stressed out people who don't sleep. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I strongly recommend women start looking into that because the reality is we're seeing depressed numbers in people who are in their twenties and thirties. Yeah. And it's incredibly sad. And the answer shouldn't be Prozac. No. And lithium when the answer really is she don't make any hormones anymore. I don't know. We got to fix that. Give just like if you know, you and I had a a tragic blunt force trauma and our pancreas got needed to be removed well we're going to need insulin for the rest of our lives or we're going to die right right so if your organs aren't working and you still have them i say you replace those hormones while we try to change your lifestyle and behaviors to to wake them back up yeah you can get off of things if if you're healthy enough for sure right but i i I don't know where where this comes from there's a lot of shame in it yeah there is a ton of shame in it and you know, the thing that a lot, a lot of women are experiencing that I see that are my age, I mean, I'm 42 and younger, it started happening for me in my mid thirties as they 
start having issues like PCOS, they stop ovulating every single month. And what women don't understand, if you're not ovulating, you're not healthy. Like you're, you're not, not, that's the you're, biggest marker for a yeah. woman. Yeah. And so people think I'm crazy when I talk about tracking ovulation. I'm like, you should know if you're ovulating or you're not. If you're not, you, you may want to, those months that you're not ovulating, supplement with like a little progesterone or, you know. Sick. I mean, I think if you're struggling with something, yeah, it's a marker to track. I certainly yeah. don't want anybody tracking things if they're feeling, if they're good. Yeah, you know exactly. But that's again, it's not, a, you know, you don't need to know, you know what I mean? So there's a balance yeah. there, right? Like, yeah. but again, if you're struggling with something, it is really important. I think we've normalized like periods are supposed to be a painful thing that you're never oh, going yeah. to want. And you can take this pill. They have like crazy pills now where you have like two periods a year or something. Oh my God. Like, three periods. Like, like, what? And yeah. I have patients and I have to beg parents to stop putting the yes. girls on this stuff. Oh my God. My daughter this year got her cycle in January and she doesn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> and we were in therapy a few weeks ago and she said, mom, isn't there some pills I can take? So she spelled this on the letter board. Isn't, isn't there some pills I can take? So I don't have to have a period every month. Cause I don't like it. And so it really opened up. It was a great opportunity for me to talk with her and tell her that it's a blessing to get your period every month and that you're, when you ovulate, you know, it's good for your heart. It's good for your brain. It's good for your skin. And it's a blessing. And it's how we get to stay healthy and young and vital is to get the cycle every month. And no, I'm not giving you any pills <laughs> so that we don't have one. You know, we, I'm not going to be doing that to you because that would be wrong. Um, we have to learn how to deal with this and perhaps, you know, we lay off the fruit cause she's been getting into fruit a little bit more. And I was like, you know, you might be eating a little too much sugar and that could be causing you to have more cramps and a few more symptoms there that we need to look at that. So. Yeah. 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 It's a big, it's a, it's a, that's a big topic. Uh, you yeah. know, with her, I'm like, Oh man, I know. <laughs> Like, God bless. You know what I mean? I yeah. got away and I had no problem with periods. I mean, it was just a non-issue for me other than like, oh God, I got to deal with something when I played sports um, until I became a vegetarian, a vegan. Yeah. I had severe problems and I didn't know I was suffering from PCOS until one ruptured and I ended up in an emergency room. Um, so I was like, oh, well that explains a whole lot of things. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I fixed it. Right. But yeah. It's this, again, normalization that this, this is, you know, we call it the curse and it's a bad, yeah. it's like, not, it was insignificant, nothing to me. I didn't even like, oh crap, that happened. I'm like, oh crap. I didn't not, I didn't know that was happening. You know what I mean? That's what, yeah. it was, that's what it should be like. And that's what it's been like for me most of the time. Now I'm 48 and I am hitting that, you know, definite perimenopause. So I just ran all my labs and I, I I'm waiting to see everything. Um, Cause my last Dutch panel was like three years ago and I was still ovulating and things were fine, you know, whatever. And I I'm sure it's going to be a shift. And I've had yeah. right now I'm in that point of like, okay, are we going to hit it? But cause I don't want it to just, I'm like, eh, I don't need it. Why would I wait till I fall apart? And I, I got to be right. like, I live 12 years of vegan. Do you not yeah. think I, I, I devastated things on my body? I absolutely did. You know, I was on hormones back then. So like you've shut down, not, not, there's no, there's nothing happening in your body. Like, yeah. It's, you've destroyed it and it's, we got to fix it. Right. Nobody can eat that much soy and gluten and expect not to shut it all down. Right. So, so, and at no cholesterol and you can't make sex hormones and everything. So yeah, it's a tough one. I really wish women, you know, by 45, you better be getting some less. I mean, you're going to need things, but you should be yeah. on top of that. And I do have to talk women into it a lot. Um, be, and they're surprised because they're coming to me for mental health stuff. They think they need a brain therapy. Yeah. That's is, this is what got me thinking is I had a woman that was like, I'm so depressed. I, I feel all this doom and gloom. And I'm like, have you checked your, she was 56. She's a oh, year out of yeah. menopause. Yeah. And I said, have you checked your hormones? Have you looked into that? And she's like, no, I think everything should be able to be fixed with diet. And I'm like, <sighs> well, um, I'm going to refer you to some people and give yeah. you a suggestion that maybe you want to get your hormones checked and look into things. If you're experiencing this like yeah. debilitating I, depression, yeah, you know, you might be able to do it with diet, but diet means food, water, air, light, yeah. sound, 
everything that comes into your system in contact with your system is a diet. Everything that goes on your skin is in your diet. Everything that comes mm. in your ears is a diet. Everything that comes up through your eyeballs is your diet. It's not just what you're eating. That's the part they need to understand. Okay, mm. cool. I, I can get on board with that. And we're going to have to change some things, mama. Because I, I bet maybe if we take her and drop her off in Africa and let her live with the Hudson for a year, she might start making testosterone again. Yep. You know, or higher levels because not a nary of electricity will touch her body. She will be eating organs. She'll be drinking blood. She will uh, be forced to do a lot of movement, lots mm -hmm. of walking and, and things and physical labor. Uh, you know, I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of change for her sleeping on the ground that she's not doing now. Yep. Right? Yeah. So maybe it could, and, but we have to do the most we can here. I don't understand it that they would think that and want to live with the pain and suffering of something. And that and I think maybe it's just, they don't know. People don't know hormones affect mental health and brain. Performance. No, they don't know that. Mm -mm. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Cause the, the psychiatry doesn't understand it. So they seem to be like, yeah, okay. I mean, I don't know what they, I don't know what the hell they study to be honest, because right. trying to find a decent one that understands the brain is like, uh, <laughs> When you find them, you gotta you gotta love on them and hold them and hug them. You're like, oh my friend, thank you. I have a couple, right, that I use yeah. clinically, and they're actually you know friends of mine, because it takes a special kind to understand, to go out of their way to learn the brain. It's yeah. like the one part of medicine that doesn't study the organ they treat. Yeah, I don't understand it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, totally. Orthopedic, orthopedic surgeons gotta know bones and joints real well. Yeah, they, they know it real cardiovascular surgeon. They understand it. They know the heart the yeah. and psychiatrists don't really know the brain and what yeah. how it works. I, you know, they know how the drugs do things. And, oh, here's symptoms. Here's a drug. So you're not getting like real care with that. Hormones are huge. So I can't tell you many times women came into me diagnosed with ADHD on a, on a stimulant, diagnosed depression on an antidepressant, diagnosed with something. And it was just a thyroid disorder. Wow. I'm like, you don't, you're, you don't have a mental illness. You have Hashimoto's. Wow. That's why you're depressed. And that's why you can't focus. That's why you can't. I mean, it's so much men, so many come in with anxiety, depression, panic attacks. It's low testosterone. Yep. I'm like we can do neurofeedback, but like, I wouldn't start there. It's not going to fix that problem. It's going right. to. It's going to, you know, put a band-aid on, you'll feel good that day. But this is, I have more testosterone. I've literally looked at labs and go, I have more testosterone than you. Wow. That, that shouldn't be, yeah, you're estrogen dominant. You're weepy and moody and cry all the time. And you're afraid all the time. Cause no dude should be walking around with this estrogen testosterone profile. Mm -mm. That's, that's the truth of it. So they don't get that. That's really the thing. And sometimes it, they don't want to hear it. No. They'd rather be told, no, I have this disorder. I'm like, no, you don't. Yeah. You don't have that at all. I'm looking at your brain. I'm looking literally at images of your brain, not what you have. It's yeah. This. So let's get that started. And okay, if in a month it's still there, I can fine tune it and tweak it. We can do brain therapies. I mean, I would make a lot more money if I'm like, well, sure, give me $5,000 and I'll, we'll try the brain therapy, right? Right. Versus like, no, just go see my buddy who does hormones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's the reality. It's, it's deeply connected to mental health brain. They're, they're all talking and signaling each other. That's yep. what they do. Thyroid affects cognition and mental health, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone. I mean, progesterone makes GABA. I right. Mean, I don't know. People like don't, I guess it's okay. You don't know these things, but your doctor should be able to tell you that's a huge part. That's why some women, right, in perimenopause, use they're like, it was like a miracle. Well, they probably have the pathway that really has a super strong dominant progesterone GABA connection. Not everybody has it as strong. Yeah. Those are the women you go, oh man, you're going to want progesterone so bad because your GABA yeah. levels are going to tank when it drops and you're going to feel horrible. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so that you can see all that in a Dutch panel. You can tell, so you can tell people, oh, you're more likely to aromatize. You're more likely to lose your hair. You're, you know, you're more likely to need progesterone. You can see that in, in, in somebody when they're 40. You don't yeah. have to wait until it's already tanked. 
so they yeah. can be proactive. It's a whole lot easier to guide the body to prevent something than it is to like steer the ship all the way back from a shipwreck situation. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad I want to have this conversation for people because I've had people I do in my private groups and all they do is follow the different keto gurus or carnivore gurus and they're a mess. Like their adrenals are a mess. Their hormones are a mess and they're struggling with weight loss resistance. They're like, let me buy these supplements. Let me buy this. Let me buy that. And I'm like, you could do that. But what you probably really want to do is actually have someone look at your hormones and actually work on that because you're at a place where obviously things are not functioning optimal, functioning optimally and you're suffering. So let's start to take the shame out of, out of this, you know, filing in macros, isn't going to do that. No, changing your macros, starting a probiotic, (laughs) all of that stuff. I mean, it could help a little bit, but it's not going to fix ultimately the problem, you know? Yeah. Cool. Well, I feel like we could probably talk at least (laughs) another hour or so. We'll have to probably do a part two at some point, but um, where can people find you and what's the best way to get a hold of you if people want to work with you? Uh, My website is really the best, um, brainandbodysolutions.com or drrimka.com. And I'll take you to my main website where you can see all the social media, um, mostly on Instagram and Facebook as Dr. Rimka. Um, and then my courses. And so on there, you can see courses and retreats. I have a retreat. We got only four more spots and man, I want you to come so bad, but I know 10 days is a long time for yep. you. To to Africa. <laughs> um, but we're doing a carnivore keto retreat and safari, uh, safari in, in South Africa next year. A um, few more spots there. Uh, but yeah, brainabodyexplosions.com. That'll take you to, to anything. I post, you know, quite frequently on Instagram. I do a lot of you know, free content. Um, And if you want to work with me on the brain and body solutions, there's a tab that says work with me. And, you know, you can do pick my brain sessions um, and just have no commitment and just talk to me, or you can uh, do a little bit more commitment and, and uh, become a a client. And um, I don't do any like required kind of coaching, but I do have 90 day kind of coaching plans to make it really affordable for people, like starting at 200 bucks a month. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. one-on-one private with me, um, as well as the group courses, which is even more affordable where you can get, you know, 90 days for like 200 bucks with me and yeah. do Q&A and different things in my, in my courses. So different options. I'm going to come out with um, even a new thing. I, uh, I had a talk yesterday where I'm going to start like being able to do answer questions in this new f- platform with some guy. So I'm working on ways to be more accessible and that's comfortable for me. That isn't wearing me out and, and yeah. Still good for my still enough for the one-on-one group format it's more affordable and then even for all the one-offs because you know when you dm me and stuff we get you know as you know yeah. it's, it's a lot and we get so many and my staff is going to read and i can't get to them all and sometimes it's like you know that that's medical advice i can't read your labs over a dm right what supplement to take it's it's really not fair to you or to me it's illegal so i'm like i can't do that I yeah. don't do a ton of it too much. I'm like, well, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, mm, yeah. I wouldn't do that if I were you or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty active uh, for the little bit of time I'm on there. And you, you, you know, you might get my staff, but you'll, they get me a lot. I answer questions. So. Awesome. Well, I'll put all that in the show notes so people can find you. And thanks for coming on and talking with me today. You Sarah. You're my, you're my little, I don't know. I, I'm supposed to call you like goddess Sarah in my mind. You know, I, <laughs> And I just, cause you're like that classic, like exactly my archetype type of who comes to see me. And I, I watch you flutter, do you think? So I'm like, oh, there's Sarah overthinking again. <laughs> look at her, look what she did. That's so awesome. Like one day I'll do like, you know, I love watching, you know, people who I influence, like where they go. And I'm like, oh, that's even better than what I was doing. And it's really, it's really cool. Um, and then still like the, you know, how yeah. we all overthink as women and what we all are still working on. Cause I'm there too. Definitely. Like, you know, like I am no better. I just happen to do this for a living. And you know, when that doc on the phone said, Hey, it might just be low testosterone. I was a little bit like, Oh, <laughs> what? You know? So I do get it, but I was like, okay, let's get labs. I, yeah. I don't put my head in the sand. <laughs> right. Act like, act like it's not happening. I mean, 
50s knocking out my door. So, and I, all my patients, all my, you know what it's like. They all yeah. complain. Well, I got fed and I did this and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, if you don't want that to happen, I would be proactive. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, exactly. All that to say hormones. <laughs> yep, exactly. Like what we were just talking about. <laughs> all right. That. Thanks again. Thank you.
so fuck 